Alright, so in this video I'm just going to be taking a look at two main objectives. So I'm going to be looking at why there is a minimum energy for an electron bound to a nucleus. And I'm also going to be looking at diagrammatical representations of electron orbitals. Okay, so why there is a minimum energy for electron bound to a nucleus? Okay, so electrons resist being confined. An electron that is confined between, for example, two walls will actually adopt a minimum energy waveform with wavelength that is twice the distance between the walls that it is confined between, as this is the maximum wavelength possible. Okay, I'm actually going to draw this. Okay, so I'm going to draw this out for you. So if we have a wave combined between two walls, it's actually going to um, make this kind of wavelength. Okay, it's not the most symmetrical waveform, but you get the gist of this, okay? So as we can see, the smallest wavelength that it can possibly be is going to be twice the distance between these two walls, okay? Where this is the wavelength here. Okay. Therefore, we can say that increasing confinement is going to decrease our wavelength, okay? And this will result in an increase in the momentum, okay? Now this is because we can say that our wavelength is equal to Planck's constant on mass times velocity, which we know is momentum, and so momentum is equal to a constant on the wavelength, okay? So decreasing our wavelength, so decreasing the denom denominator here, is going to result in an overall larger value for our momentum, okay, and that's just basic mathematics. Okay, so the smaller the wavelength, the larger the overall momentum. Okay, so electrons will actually adopt a minimum energy waveform where it won't fall into the nucleus. Okay, so if it was to fall into the nucleus, it would need to make a really tight wave with a really short wavelength, okay, and the shorter the wavelength, the higher the momentum, and thus the higher the kinetic energy, okay, because kinetic energy is related to momentum, okay. So the minimum energy waveform can actually kind of just be thought of as a compromise, okay. So this also explains, sorry, why electrons don't just collapse into the nucleus, okay. It's due to the momentum and the fact that they don't want their wavelength restricted, okay, so they don't want their wavelength to be as small as possible. Okay, so that's I guess an overall general view of why this is so. Okay, so in the last video I spoke about how we can use 3D waves to describe electrons, okay? So I'm going to show how we do that now, okay? So the lowest energy waveform for an electron of a hydrogen atom is one spherically symmetrical wave function, okay? This wave function depends on the distance from the nucleus, okay, with it being maximum at the nucleus, okay. So there are actual several, there, there's actually several different ways of representing this kind of waveform, okay. We can look at it as a radial function, as a gradient or contour plot, or as a lobe, okay. So this is typically the way that 3D orbitals we discussed in the previous video are actually represented, okay. So radial function, first up. Okay, so the orbital can be represented as a radial function when we have the amplitude of the wave plotted against the distance from the nucleus. Okay, so I'm just going to draw that out for you. So for one um, electron, for example, this is just an example of a um, of a one of the orbital of a one electron um, atom. Okay. So we have our radius here, so our distance from the nucleus, with this being zero, so at the nucleus. And we have our um, amplitude here. So we're going to represent amplitude like this. Okay, so for this, um, the maximum amplitude is actually going to be at the nucleus. Okay, so it's going to start up here. And as we get further from the nucleus, this amplitude will decrease. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much what it looks like, okay? We can also represent it as a gradient or contour plot, 
Okay, it's so where the intensity of the shading indicates the amplitude and only one quarter is represented. Okay, so I'll just draw this out for you. Okay, so it looks something like this. Try draw. Okay, so if this is our nucleus, if this is like our atom as a whole, this um, kind of quarter of a lobe, if this is our nucleus, we have our highest amplitude here, and then as we exit, or as we get further, we get the amplitude decreasing, okay, and that's shown by the decrease in the shading, okay. It's hard to do with texture, but I think you guys can get the general idea about how we get um, our shading decreasing as we move from the nucleus, indicating our decrease in amplitude. Okay, so we can also simply represent this as a lobe, okay? And this lobe is just going to indicate the sign of the wave function, okay? So this spherical lobe indicates the sign of the wave function, and the radius indicates how far the electron has extended from the nucleus, okay? So it's literally just going to be like a sphere, okay? Where the boundaries of the sphere show how far the electron has um, gone from the nucleus. I guess this is a lobe. Okay, so this type of orbital that I've actually shown you above, this type of electron orbital, is known as a 1s orbital. Okay, the s stands for spherical. Okay, as this is a spherical orbital, as you've seen. Okay, this is what our orbital looks like. It's a spherical orbital. The lobe representation, uh, the gradient contour representation that I showed you was just like a quarter of it. Okay, this is what it looks like. This is our lobe. Um, this is our spherical orbital. Okay, um, we'll go further into uh, detail in regards to the numbering of the orbital, so what this one means. Okay, but for now, just know that S means spherical. Okay, so this kind of um, orbital has no nodes, and like I said, S equals spherical. Okay, so for a radial function and contour plot, the graph actually represents electron density. So that is the closer the nucleus closer to the nucleus, sorry, the higher the electron density. And the further you get from the nucleus, the lower the electron density. Okay? So gradient graphs do this as well, where the darkest regions show the highest electron density and the lightest regions show the lowest. Okay? Okay, so these representations actually... Um, and in particular, the radial function actually display a very notable characteristic of electron orbitals. Okay, electrons are actually not bound within a specific perimeter. So, as we saw in the graph, electron density decays exponentially towards zero, but never actually reaches zero. And so, there is a really finite charge density even at massive distances from the nucleus. Okay, lobe representations like the last row representation we saw actually represent 90% of electron charge density. Okay, so they show, uh, they, they represent surfaces of common electron density, so where most of the charge density can be found, okay, and that being 90% of the charge density. Okay, so really, when we talk about electron density, we're mostly talking about the probability of finding an electron within a region, where the higher the electron density, the higher the probability, okay? These representations, Oh, yeah, as I said, the higher the electron density, the higher the probability. Okay? So these representations are not absolute, okay? and it's really important to recognise this. Okay, so I've just given you guys a general overview of our 1s electron orbitals. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit spoonfeedme.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.